Hi everyone, so for today, we'll be working on a solution for week 8, Trivia. So for this lab problem, we actually are to design a web page using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to let the users answer trivia questions. We will have part 1, which is a multiple choice question, and part 2, which is a free response question. So before we continue, do refer to the notes provided for week 8 by CS50 team for helpful information that we will use in this lab problem set. So first, let's look at the design. So we should use a H3 heading for the text of the question. And we should also have one button for each of the possible answer choices. And there should be at least three answer choices, out of which exactly one should be correct. So for this example, we will have five answer choices, out of which one will be correct. So now that we have the design, how should it work? So if the user chooses the incorrect answer, two things must happen. So firstly, the button must turn red and the word incorrect should appear beneath the question. So likewise, if the user chooses the correct answer, the same two things must happen where the button will now turn green instead, and the word correct should appear beneath the question. So now let's move on to the free response question. So first, for the design, we will use a H3 heading for the text of the question, and we will use an input field so that the user can key in their response. We should use a button to let the user confirm their answer, and now that we have the design, what should happen when we click Check Answer? So if the user keys in the correct answer, two things will happen. So firstly, the text field itself should turn red, and the text incorrect should appear beneath the question. And likewise, if the answer is correct, there should be the same two things that happen as well. The text field should turn green, and the text correct should appear beneath the question. So now we understand what we need to do, so let's see what we have to work with. By running HTTP server in our terminal while we are in our lab 8 directory, we will actually start a web server that you can click to view the pages we have now. So this is what it looks like. You can see that there is a section of part 1, multiple choice, and part 2, free response. So now, let's look at the distribution code. So, scrolling through, you can see that we have a section here to add code to check answers to the question, and then a section to add multiple choice question here, and after that, the section to add our free response question here. So let's work on the first, which is to add multiple choice questions. So first, we are to use the H3 heading for the text of the question. And this is the segment that we have in our index.html file, where we are to add the multiple choice question. So putting our question in H3 heading, it will look like this, where the question is placed in between H3 tags. Next, we will have one button for each possible answer choices, and there should be at least three answer choices, of which one should be correct. So for an example, we will have 5 possible answer choices, of which one is correct, and each will be a button that we can click, and each button will contain the text, which is the answer choice. So this is the section that we have so far, and now we will add in our buttons. So you can see our first answer choice is in between the button tag, and as our button will contain text, we will indicate that the type equals to text. Then we'll add in the next option, and the next, and ending with our fifth answer choice, which is in this case the correct answer. Next, if the user chooses the incorrect answer, the button should turn red, and incorrect should appear beneath the question. Likewise, it will turn green if the answer is correct. So what does this mean? We actually need to be able to tag the answers as correct or incorrect. So that way, the system will actually know what to do when the answer is chosen. So to do so, we will use the class attribute to assign a style to our correct or incorrect answers, and then we will need to tag each response as correct or incorrect. So here's what we have. So we will add in class equals to incorrect for the first response, and same for the rest of the incorrect responses. And the last response, which is the correct answer, we will put class equals to correct. Next, after the user chooses the answer, we want the word incorrect or correct to appear below the buttons. So this means we want something to appear below the buttons, we will label it as answer1 for now. So this will be our placeholder, where later we will say that if the answer chosen is correct, answer1 equals to the text correct, and vice versa for incorrect. So let's write this down first. So let's put it here. So again, our question is in between the H3 tags. Then I'll put in my button for the first response, but before that, I will assign the class for this first, where the first one will be incorrect, and the type is text. Now 
Let me just duplicate this so I don't need to retype the whole thing over again. Last one will be correct. And lastly, remember, I want to put my placeholder there as answer1. So later on, we will just say whether answer1 equals to correct or incorrect. Okay? So when we load the web page, this is what we have now. And if you were to click on the buttons, you will realize that nothing happens yet, and we will need to work on that later. But firstly, let's move on and add in the free response question. So it says that we should use the H3 heading again for the text of the question. So let's do that. So this is the section in our index file where we have to put in our free response question. So let's write the question here, sandwiched in between H3 tags. Next, we want to use an input field where the user can key in a response with a button for them to check answer. So since we are getting them to fill in some inputs, we need to do up a form for the input and button. So let's create a form here where we have the opening and closing for our form. And then now, we actually need to put in the input field where input type is text and the placeholder will be country. Then we will add our button where the button ID equals to check, which we will use later, and the button here will simply say check answer. Lastly, just like the previous question, we want the word correct or incorrect to appear below the question, so now we will use our placeholder here as answer to instead. So let's write this down. So let me just write my question in between H3 tags. So I'll create a form, so this is where I'm going to put in my input and then the button to check answer. So again, the input type will be text. So the placeholder will be country. And then I'll have a button there. We will use the ID as check we will use later. And the word will be check answer. And my placeholder for this part will be answer to. So when you load the web page, this is what you get. And again, if you try to click any of the buttons here, particularly just check answer, you will realize that they don't work for now. So when you load the web page, this is what you get. And again, if you try to click the button check answer, you will realize that it doesn't work for now. So now we need to add in the code to check answers to questions. So what should it look like? So for the multiple choice question, we need to tell the system that there are two possible outcomes and these need to be printed below the question, either correct or incorrect. Remember, earlier on we actually typed the possible responses and we had categorized each response as correct or incorrect. So this means we actually need to describe what will be the event that happens that will tell the system whether the answer is correct or incorrect. And this event here that I'm talking about will actually be when the user clicks the button. Okay, but before we jump straight into that, let's just take one step back. So here, look at the structure of the code. Notice that the code to check answers to the questions are located in the header, while your questions are in the body. So this means that after you respond to the questions that are posted in the body section, your code to check the right answers needs to reference elements in the body. So for this to work, the code to check the right answers will need to run only after the whole page has loaded, right? So that is, you need the head, body, and rest of the code to load first before you run the code in the head. Because you need the body to load first before you use anything in the head to reference the body. If not, there's nothing in the body to look, right? So you have to wait for the whole page to load first. Okay? So what this means is that you need to add an event first at the top where the code will only take action after the whole page has loaded. So this is called DOM content loaded, where DOM stands for Document Object Model. So you'll see this in action later, but I want to share why we need this particular section. 
because without it, your code will not work when you click check answer later on. So we will add DOM content loaded to our code, where the code to check answers will only run after the event DOM content loaded is complete. So this is what it looks like where we put DOM content loaded as the event. And then everything now that we're going to be writing within the curly braces will be executed after the whole page is loaded. So with that done, let's see how to tell the system to check whether the answer is correct or incorrect. Okay, we've ascertained that the event that will trigger the system to check whether the answer is correct is when the user clicks the button, right? So your system must listen out for this event. So for this section, to explain this whole thing a bit clearer, I will actually refer to the notes provided for the week 8 lecture by the CS50 team as the notes are really helpful and gives us an idea of what needs to be done for our trivia page. So refer to this particular section that's already in the notes. Let's go through it to understand how this works and then we will apply it to our case later on. So this code basically shows the viewer three buttons, labeled red, green and blue. When the user clicks on the button, the color of the body section will change to the color that the viewer selects. So in this case, we want the system to look for the buttons labeled red, green and blue in the body. So first, we need to tell the system that we will be making changes to the body section of the code. So let's declare our variable called body, where body equals to document query selector body, where the system will look for the element tagged as body. Next, you will see that there's this section on document.querySelector green, and then add events listener click. So what this means is that the system will look for the element that equals to green, and this event is triggered when green is chosen. How is green chosen? It happens when the user clicks the green button. Okay, so that is the event listener. Next, we see this section on body.style.backgroundColor. So this will change the background color of the body accordingly. So how do we apply this to our code? Let's start with this section first, where if the answer is correct, the button will turn green. So first, we need to tell the system to return the element labeled as correct. So we'll say, let's correct equals to document query selector dot correct. Then we will need to tell the system what will be the event that triggers this. And we have already talked about it will be a click. So we will add that the event listener is as such. And then next, we need to tell the system that when this happens, the resulting action is to turn the background of the button green. So we say, change the background color of this button tagged as correct to green. And then now what we want is for the word to appear below the question and the word is to say correct. So this is what it looks like where we're setting the inner HTML of our placeholder, answer one as correct. So if button chosen is equals to correct, your inner HTML of answer one equals to correct. And that is how you get the text to appear below the questions, right? So what is inner HTML? So this returns the text content of the element and this element in this case is answer one. In this case, we will determine that the word will be correct. So let's write this down. So let me just put this here. I'm going to add the DOM content loaded event first. There's a frog croaking outside my window. I'm not sure you can hear it in this recording. It's very loud. Okay, so I've put in my curly braces and everything within here will be run only after the whole page loads. So let's work on the first part that we've just discussed, which is when the answer is correct, the button will turn green. Okay, so we'll look for the tag that is labeled as correct for this case. So the event listener in this case will be a click. And after it clicks, what happens? We want to change the color of the button. And then after that, we will set answer one as the word correct. Okay, and there you have it. Now we need to do the same for the incorrect answers, just that instead of green, we will now turn the button red. So what is the main difference here? 
The difference here is that for our code to check for the correct answer, there was only one answer tagged as correct. But then now, we have multiple responses tagged as incorrect, and as long as any of these are chosen, the system needs to identify that all are incorrect and all of their buttons will turn red if they are clicked on. So we will need to modify our query selector just a little bit. So in this case, we will actually say, let's incorrect equals to document.querySelector all, because we want all the incorrect tags to be detected. So now we want the button to turn red for every incorrect answer. So this means applying the styling of changing the button to red for all incorrect answers. So if there are three incorrect answers selected, the code needs to turn the button red for each of these three times if they are chosen. So how do we turn the button red for every incorrect answer? This is where our for loop comes in. So for every incorrect answer, where we identify this based on the number of elements that we have tagged as incorrect, we will say that for each time we click the button, the styling will update such that the background turns red and the word incorrect will appear below the question. So let's put this in. So let's just create our new section here. So in this case, it will be query selector all because we have more than one tag that would be called incorrect. Right, so again, for every incorrect answer we have, we will need to change the button styling. Right, and how many elements of incorrect do we have? That will depend on the length. So again, when click is the event that is triggered, what do we do? Number one, we will need to change the button color to red. And then after that, the word incorrect will appear below, where we will put the inner HTML of answer to as incorrect. Okay, I just realized that it should be answer 1 instead, right? Because we are still at the first question. So let me just make that very quick amendment here, okay? So you can check back to the web page to confirm that this works. If you have found this video helpful so far, do remember to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps whenever someone interacts with the video, be it by liking a video, subscribing to the channel, or maybe even leaving a comment. It really helps with the algorithm to push up my video to others who might be looking for a walkthrough for this particular lab problem set into the rest of the CS50 solutions. So I really do appreciate it whenever someone helps me out with that. Thank you so much. Okay, and let's move on to the next part, which is for the free response submission. So the input that the user keys in will be the word to check. So if the input contains the word Switzerland, the answer is correct. And do note we need the system to recognize answers with a mixture of lowercase and uppercase correct, as long as it says Switzerland. So let's refer to week 8 notes for some help. So this is what we have from the notes, where input stores the text that's keyed in by the user. And let's use that first. And then we need to tell the system that the event to trigger for this is when the user clicks the check answer button, which we have labeled as check. Then we will need to store the input that the user has keyed in, and we will assign this variable simply as input. Then we will tell the system to change color depending on the response. So if input equals to Switzerland, and do note that we've included two lowercase to ensure that we recognize the correct answer, regardless of whether any of the alphabets are uppercase or lowercase. We will change the input style to green, and we will update the answer to inner HTML to correct. And for all other cases, which just means that the answer is wrong, we will update the background color to red, and we also change the inner HTML for answer to to incorrect. So let me just label the section here that we are doing for this free response question.
So we'll add our event listener where there's a click and on the text called check. Assign the variable input to the text that the user keys in. To lowercase to make sure that we don't miss out any correct answers. So let's write that our correct answer is actually Switzerland. So if the correct answer is keyed in, what happens? We will change the field color to green and inner HTML for answer 2 will be correct. And for all other cases, what do we want? We will just turn the field red instead and the inner HTML for answer 2 will say incorrect. Okay, and then if you were to look at your web page now, this is what you'll see. So, let's try it out. Right, for every incorrect answer, my buttons are turning red. And for the correct one, it turns green. And if I were to key in the wrong tree, you can see that the word incorrect appeared. But for to key in the right answer, you will see that it should turn green. Yep, and there you go. So this is the answer for week 8 trivia. And thank you so much for watching and if you found this video to be helpful, please do remember to leave a comment and more importantly to subscribe to the channel. It really means a lot and it does help with the channel's visibility. Thank you and I will see you in the next video which I hope to do it soon. Bye!